Hi, my name's Tom Field, and I was a contributing editor at Sky and Telescope magazine for about 10 years. I'm a software developer and uh, an admirer of the skies. We're going to talk today about how we know so much about the stars using spectroscopy. We'll start out with this gorgeous, iconic image. These are shockwaves of enormous power, of course, creating new stars. When I see this image, I always ask myself, <laughs> what about all these other stars? Where are they in their life cycles, and how do we know? So, and that's what I found spectroscopy helped us understand. So, the history of humanity and learning about stars is centuries of men and women doing science, many times going down dead ends. Now, to be honest, if, if uh, again, I was in this picture, I would be a little dot way out on the horizon out here. But I wanted a front row seat, and I found that what I'm going to talk about today helped me understand what the giants did over the last several centuries. So my process and my learning curve was a little bit disappointing at first. I read all sorts of online sources and texts and magazines, but I found that a lot of it just didn't come together, and I didn't remember a lot of it. I, I don't have a degree in astrophysics. Uh, you know, I'm not a scientist. I just wanted to understand more about the beautiful skies that we observe. And I wanted, to, when I read things in magazines, to understand a little more about what they were talking about. I found out that spectroscopy allowed me to do that. So I'm going to show just three quick examples today in the Perseus star field. There's a star field, and what can we say about this? Well, <laughs> as devil's advocate, I'd say this is a pretty boring star field, right? It's a bunch of dots. You know, maybe there's an asterism. Doesn't seem to be any constellations. The one thing that's here is there's some stars of different colors, so maybe we could tell a little bit more about the temperature. But we're going to look here at just three of these stars in the time we've got available today to show you how we know so much more about them. Now, the first thing we do is in spectroscopy is we have to split that starlight into rainbows. So here are the same three stars. Now, this image was captured with just a DSLR. So let's take a quick aside here to look at this. It's just a standard everyday prism. And if I had a bright light and I shined it through, we'd get a rainbow, right? Standard stuff. But <laughs> I didn't have enough duct tape to put this on my camera. So... These days we don't have to, it's so big and clumsy. Now we can use just a little inch and a quarter grating like this one. It's called a star analyzer and it sells for less than $200 and screws right onto your camera. And I wanna demonstrate how it works here. So it's gonna take a little bit of juggling, but here we've got a really bright light. And when I hold the grating up in front of the light, you can see that rainbow there. It's just the pieces of the rainbow because this is a pure gas, but that gives you the idea that this works just like a prism does. So we can split starlight and look at the spectra here on the screen. So let's start out with just this star here. There's its spectrum over here and we can see what about it. Well, it's not continuous either. It has some little gaps in it, doesn't it? And those gaps are how we learn about the stars. Now, we're not going to get into a lot of the science today, but trust me, the science isn't hard. We don't have to drill down really deeply into quantum mechanics or anything like that. So just a quick overview, and that is each element, when we burn it, or when light passes through it, has its own fingerprint. So this hydrogen here, we can see that its lines are here and here, what are called the bomber lines, are very different than the lines we see on helium. And that's all we have to know. Now, how are those lines created? Well, just really briefly, as electrons jump around in the Bohr model between orbitals, they give off or they absorb light. And that's all we need to know. If you want to know more, then you learn more. Once you have data like this, it gets more interesting and you end up learning more, as I found. But so, one more example of how these fingerprints work. This is actually a poster that, uh, that we offer to teachers, 36 by 24 inch poster. And I just wanted to show you here that each element really does have a different fingerprint. Okay, with that in mind, let's go back to this image. This was done with just a DSLR. And the DSLR with a tracking mount with a star analyzer on the nose piece. So 
These gaps here tell us that this is a type M star. Now, what does that mean? Now, there's lots of ways to talk about this, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this HR diagram, but I wanted you to see just really briefly, if you're not familiar with it, that we can classify stars by temperature. And a type M star is a cool star, and in this case, the star we're looking at, we know from its spectrum, is a supergiant. And there we can see it's just like Betelgeuse, for example. And we learn that from the spectrum. So what we're learning is how to navigate this map of star life cycles with data that we captured ourselves. Let's look at the second star here. This is called a BE star. And it doesn't have all those gaps. It's got one here. But it does have this bright spot here. What's going on with that spectrum? Well, this is the spectrum of, as I said, a BE star. So it's a B star in temperature, and that E stands for the emission from the dust in that circumstellar disk. And we're actually seeing that glowing dust right here, just with a backyard camera. By the way, spectroscopy is much less affected by urban light pollution. So this is the kind of thing we can do in the cities. We don't have to travel to some dark side, sky site and, you know, capture hours worth of data. Just really short images because we're looking at really bright stars. Okay, so that's the BE star. Let's go back to our HR diagram. And we can see that B stars are over here. And so this BE star is going to be somewhere probably up in this area like Spica. By the way, I just wanted to point out another familiar star or two here if you're not of not familiar with this diagram, there's our beloved Vega, for example. All right, so now we've seen two different regions in the HR diagram using data that we captured ourselves. Let's look at this third spectrum down here. This is called a wolf rayet star, and look, it's got all of these bright spots. Not just the one that we saw up here, these bright emission lines. What's going on with the BE star, or excuse me, with the wolf rayet star? Well, these are late stage stars that have blown off a lot of their outer shell. They have really intense stellar winds that broaden these lines so that we can see them. And again, we're not going to read all this, but this is the kind of thing that once we've captured the spectrum ourselves, makes for much more interesting reading. And the only thing I wanted to show you here was look how hot these stars can get. So on this scale down here, <clears throat> those stars are going to be, you know, way over in this area. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we've navigated the HR diagram, as I mentioned, looking at three different star types. And this is the kind of thing that we can do as amateurs. So how do we do it? Well, we can capture spectra with almost any instrument. I mean, a standalone DSLR, as we just saw. It can be a telescope. This is what the uh, Explore Scientific ED-102, great telescope for this. Both of these would have to be on a tracking mount of some sort. And then how do we actually capture the spectra? Well, we use this star analyzer grading that I mentioned a few minutes ago. So let's start out here with the star analyzer. Just looking here with a standalone DSLR and this adapter that we make available, you can actually capture the spectra. You don't need a telescope at all. Or if you've got a FITS camera, you can put the grading on your FITS camera. Uh, if you want to put your DSLR on a telescope, we've got a way to do that on the T-ring. Uh, you can use a video camera, which makes for just fantastic outreach and education to show a live spectrum flickering on the screen. It's really captivating, and people love to see it. We can also, of course, put the star analyzer grading inside a filter wheel. So there's lots of ways to set these things up, and there's lots more information on our site. How do we capture the spectra then? Well, over here is an image from our telescope. There's the star, and maybe you can see on your monitor there, there's a gap right there. But we want to do science here. Maybes aren't enough, right? So this is the software I wrote. It's called RSpec. I don't know why I'm circling it up there when I could circle it down here where you could read it. So uh, the software looks at the region between the orange lines that we can drag around any star, and it just sums up the data and gives us an intensity plot. 
So this dip in the spectrum here, sort of in the blue-green, is that gap I was pointing to here. There's lots of other absorption lines that we can see in the data once we graph it. So this graph makes things much, much clearer. And then once we have this graph, then we can use tools that are built into the software and other reference works to figure out what type of star it is. In this case, this is Vega, and those are the hydrogen bomber lines that we captured. You can capture these, as I said, with videos, which means we're just talking about exposures that are less than a second. So, you know, I'm often frustrated when I read the magazines. I see these gorgeous images of galaxies, and then I read the fine print, and they say it's 10 or 15 hours of integration time on some mountaintop dark, dark sky site. I, you know, I live in Seattle. It, we have a lot of rain. We have very short nights in the summer. I'm, you know, I'm a terrible imager, really. I, and I don't have the patience or the knowledge or the equipment to do that kind of high-end stuff. But this kind of stuff I can do, and I'm sure that you can too if you want to. So really, that's all I wanted to tell you today. A little bit about how we process spectra, the kinds of things we can learn from it. When we're looking at star fields like this one here, not only can we learn about the star forming regions, but we can also learn about the life cycles of all the stars in the field of view. It's a really exciting field. Our website has lots more information. There's a contact form there. You can communicate with me. Look at the tutorial videos that are there. I hope this presentation has been helpful for you, and I really appreciate the opportunity to speak here today.